Let's start in with the respiratory system. Now, first of all, with the respiratory system, you need to understand the difference between ventilation and respiration. Those two terms are often used interchangeably, but they're not the same. Ventilation means to move air in and out of the lungs. Respiration means to swap the gases. And of course, you're primarily talking about oxygen and carbon dioxide. So those are two different things. Somebody can ventilate all day long, doesn't mean they're going to respirate. And of course, that could be deadly very fast. Now, when it comes to the respiration, there's two different types, an external and an internal. The external happens at the lungs. The internal happens at all the tissues of the body. And the reason you have these two different types of respiration is because you're swapping the same two gases, but they're moving in opposite directions. Whenever blood goes through the lungs, you want to get oxygen into the blood. But then when it goes to a tissue, you want to get that oxygen out of the blood. At the lungs, you want to get CO2 out of the blood, but in the tissues, you want to get it in. So you're moving the same gases, but they're going in opposite directions at the lungs versus the tissues. Look at functions of the respiratory system. Gas exchange, that's the one you always think of first. You got to get oxygen into the blood and deliver it to every living cell of the body for aerobic respiration to produce that ATP. At the same time, you better quickly get rid of that carbon dioxide. If you don't, hydrogen will build up. So I get acidosis quickly. If that gets bad enough, that can be deadly. And of those two gases, the carbon dioxide is actually the primary regulator of your breathing. Number two, regulation of blood pH. We just mentioned that above. If you don't get rid of that carbon dioxide, hydrogen will build up. That's when the pH drops. Remember, low pH numbers are the acids. You got to maintain in most tissues of the body a pH range of 7.35 to 7.45. So the respiratory system is your number one pH balancing system because it's always working to balance that carbon dioxide. Number three, voice production. Inside the larynx, you got a couple of elastic tendons there. We call our vocal cords or vocal folds. When you move air past them and they vibrate, it's primarily what gives you the sound of your speech. Olfaction, we want to smell anything. We got to draw chemicals into the nasal cavity. You're going to have to inhale air through the nose for that to work there. Then also protection. You'll see different types of protecting mechanisms. You got mucus, which helps to catch and trap particles in the air. You got cilia, helps to move them out of this region of the respiratory system, up and out of it. We'll see how that works. And of course, things like macrophages working to destroy things too. Let's also look at the upper and lower respiratory tracts. Now, upper respiratory tract in many cases will be anything from the beginning of your nose through the pharynx and all the structures associated with them. Lower respiratory tract generally starts at the larynx, which is your voice box. Now, don't be surprised if some authors put larynx up here in the upper, but we're going to put it in the lower. So start at the nose, go all the way through the pharynx, which is your throat. That's going to be the upper. Then anything below that with your larynx on down, all the way to the very end of the lungs at what's called the alveoli, you're going to have the lower respiratory tract. But let's go back to the nasal cavity and look at some of the structures. We can start with the nares, your nostrils, the openings to your nose right there. Lead further back into there. You're going to run to these coana. You're going to see these bony ridges on either side of the nasal cavity in illustrations. There'll be a vestibule, just a space right inside the nose right there. You'll see vestibule used in other places too. After that, you get to your hard palate. That's what makes the floor of your nasal cavity and the roof of your oral cavity. Put your tongue up on the roof of your mouth. Well, that's the bottom of your nasal cavity there. It's that maxillin palatine bone making that hard palate. Then you got the nasal septum. It's like a wall right down the center of your nasal cavity there. Sometimes you hear about that deviating left or right, and that can definitely interfere with breathing. The anterior front part is a large amount of cartilage. Then rear to the back, posterior, you got bomer and ethmoid bone. But don't forget those bony ridges. Again, they're found on either side of that nasal septum. And then the meatus are the little openings and passageways found in between them. Further back, you'll find these paranasal sinuses, little spaces leading up to some of these bones of the skull, and also the nasolacrimal duct, which allows moisture to get from your eyes down into your nasal cavity. Look at nasal cavity functions. Number one, a passageway for air. You better have a constant flow of air or everybody knows you'd be in trouble fast. 
cleaning the air. Look up saying just your nose. You've got this damp environment with this mucus and with all these bony ridges and that nasal septum. You get a very turbulent airflow. The air swirls around in all directions. That'll allow anything in the air to hit that damp mucus and stick to it. So definitely works to clean. You also need to humidify and warm the air. You were to try and breathe in a lot of dry, cold air that would damage those delicate epithelial passageways in this system. Get out and breathe rapidly on a cold day, that happens. So humidifying, warming that air is very important. Sense of smell, got to draw chemicals into the nasal cavity. And then you also get these paranasal sinuses. Some of these uh, bones of the skull have hollow spaces that affect the sound of your voice. So it definitely affects your speech in a way there too. Now you get down to your pharynx, right? We're gonna go nasal cavity, down to your pharynx, which is your throat. So we're going from proximal to distal through this system right here. At pharynx, you have air, food, and drink all passing through your throat. So that's gonna be part of the respiratory. You'll see it in the digestive system too. But there's three different sections to this pharynx. Way up high, superior, you see the nasopharynx. It's just the region way up high, close to your nasal cavity. In this area, you'll find the openings to the eustachian or auditory tubes. They go back to your middle ear, allow you to balance pressure on your eardrum, your tympanic membrane right there. Also, you got the soft palate. If you look to the very rear of your oral cavity in a mirror, you can usually see it to the very back with that uvula dangling right down off the center of it soft palate skeletal muscles so you can flip that thing up and down then right behind posterior to the oral cavity you got the oropharynx and then down low inferior close to the larynx is the laryngopharynx so location is primarily what's different about them here's a picture right here of lungs you can see the right lung over here with one two three lobes and the left one over here with two that's because of the positioning of the heart, right? Right lung's always bigger with three lobes, left one smaller with two right there. You can come down the trachea, your windpipe, see how it splits into these primary bronchi. That's what leads to each lung. Then the second branching, secondary bronchi, gonna go down to these individual lobes. Then the third tertiary branch goes down to what's called bronchopulmonary segments, not shown in this picture here. You can see the diaphragm muscle, the lungs rest right on top of it. And at the very bottom of the lungs, the end of all these passageways, you're going to run into all these alveoli, microscopic air sacs where gas exchange occurs. So there's another little picture there. Here's the nasal cavity nose with the nares or nostrils. There's a vestibule to the inside. Here are the bony ridges seen to the inside, the little meatus passageways in between them. Here you'd have nasopharynx, then oropharynx, then laryngopharynx. And there's your soft palate. Can't really see the uvula be hanging right off the bottom of it there. But this region be your larynx, your voice box. There's your trachea. And of course, you can see a primary bronchus and then a few secondary over here at the side. And again, right lung is larger with three lobes, left one smaller with two. And there's that diaphragm muscle found inferior to the lungs.